in vogue. Welcome to today's episode of Bottle Cap Investigations. Today we're following Lauren, one of a growing population of SoCal girls, or SCGs, native to the southern part of California. SCGs are a wonderful and vital part of the ecosystem here. Southern California simply would not be the same without them. SCGs are of a rare class of animal we call consumables. They feed primarily by consuming goods within a capitalist system, preferably very expensive goods from an intensely capitalist environment. Things like expensive clothing, expensive cars, expensive food, and large overpriced housing are just a sample of what an SCG needs to survive. Today, however, we will see a threat to the stability of the SCG's environment. The growing subgroup of SCGs, known as the Collectivist Party, poses a danger of undermining the individualism which sustains the high quality of capitalism the SCGs need. Stop! Have a time! Arr! Here we get a rare glimpse into many of the consumerist elements of our specimen. Notice the nails, clothes, hair, and accessories. Clearly they have no defensive purposes. They are solely to identify her as one of the ruling elite. All of these point to a very close relationship with consumerism. Ah yes, the hair. Similar to a lion's mane in portraying social standing and fashion, helping the SoCal girls to sell themselves to other more powerful species, marking them as dominant figures in a consumerist society, and that leads us to... Can you hear that? It's Horatio Alger calling! Yeah, this is she. Oh, uh... I can get there as soon as I can. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. The fashion industry has played a long part in the evolution of this species. The high turnover speed of new fashions and rapidly increasing price tags, favored traits such as extreme wealth, and a willingness to spend a great deal of money on non-essentials. Lauren's interest in the fashion industry is a good sign for her, but we shall see whether she can resist the pull toward joining her collectivist party of friend, Heidi. Here Lauren markets the ultimate product, herself using a distinct form of business camouflage to better blend her into her work surroundings. See how Lauren does her hair? The pullback bangs give her a pulled together look. Normally in work situations, you wouldn't find women wearing low cut tank top blouses, but the SoCal girl sees no problem with showing skin in an interview. In Los Angeles, it is assumed that one will be showing a good portion of skin in any situation. Pictured here is a SoCal girl smile. You will note that the SoCal girl uses this smile in situations where she wants people to like her. This smile is most commonly used with authority figures and males. Lisa Love, on the other hand, doesn't need to smile. She has worked her way up the social SoCal ladder and now gets to judge everyone below her. Pause here. Notice the tensing of the neck and the diverted eyes. Lauren doubts she has the skills required for the position is showing signs of wavering under the pressure. We'll need to follow her longer to see the results. Why Team Vogue? Because, I mean, I loved Vogue. I've read Vogue for years. And I loved Teen Vogue because, like, that's, that's where I get ideas for I mean, everything I do. And I like that, that it does have all the fashion and then like in everyone they have like an issue that affects teens. Notice her answers. There are like seven yeah. likes in like the whole like 30 second interview. Good. That is like totally um, unrealistic method of speaking well, anywhere except here in the hills. After Lauren rejoins Heidi, we're going to head to the Geisha House, a haven for the collectivist party, which may pose a significant danger to Lauren's individualism. The restaurant is in the dirtier part of town. You'll notice the tattoo parlor and tarot card shop. It is modeled after the culture of Japan, an environment which has historically favored collectivist species. In a very real way, the restaurant is an individualist's hell. We will have to see how Lauren fares here, given these dangers. Arr, notice the dark lighting. We must now be going to follow Lauren and her collectivist-minded friends into those seedy parts of the hills. Both of these are traditional symbols of occult imagery. So what nights, how many nights? Here are challenges presented to David Lorn, the two individualistic characters by the collectivist enemies, who reject the Horatio Alger myth. While Lorn tries vainly to defend working, David agrees with the predators, though his nonverbal action portrays his nervousness. Unfortunately, Lorn and David are defeated by collectivism here in hell. Let's do it. Normally, I usually work like 40 hours a week. Holy full time. Yeah. 
I just really don't like working. You guys, you know people do have full-time jobs? Crazy thought, <laughs> I know. Luckily, her comment is laughed off by the males of the group, and the females follow suit. Order has been re-established. Here we see Lauren reapplying super shiny lip gloss. It is important for the SoCal girl to have lip gloss on at all times, so Lauren's action is expected. Lip gloss is part of the complete perfection package that the SoCal girl has to uphold in order to keep her rank with her friend. Well, that was certainly a fight, wasn't it? Next, we'll see ha Lauren and Heidi in the Fashion Institute for Design and Merchandising, where they'll be examined by the elder Susan to see if they fit in the fashion school. Crikey! The school is an individualist American heaven, and if Lauren is accepted by the school, it will be a strong indicator of her status among the individualist subgroup. We shall see how this new environment responds to each of our SCGs. <laughs> Away from the dungeon of collectors' values, Lauren's individualism no. should perform quite school, well. It's gonna be kind of Lauren has really to come into her own with her focus on work it's these last few minutes. Everything. Lauren wears black and Heidi wears white. Lauren wears pants and Heidi wears a skirt. Lauren wears sleeves and Heidi wears a tank top. Already from the beginning, we see the differences between the two. Heidi, nice to meet you as well. I'm gonna start. Ah, the light is all on Lauren here. Those dark shadows on Heidi's face don't bode well for her collectivism. With you, Lauren, okay. and then I'll come out and meet with you right after that. Okay. Come in. In this constructed heaven, where everything is bright and clean, an American flag in the background, Lauren, the hard-working individualist, is praised by her elders in the tribe. By following the status quo, she has succeeded in open doors for her advancement. How do you feel about your major product development? I like it so far. I mean, it seems like I've kind of looked over them all, and this is definitely where I have the most interest. Give an interview with Teen Vogue. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very exciting. Uh, I know. <laughs> that's a, a so, great opportunity. Mm -hmm. So a lot I mean, of students would pay to have that opportunity. Here's Susan's nonverbal emphasis on tone like, in the word pay. The uses it Wait, as a metaphor an for kill, like this, suggesting really that Lorne must will, fend for herself and not time. give in to lazy yeah. collectivism. <laughs> Oh, it's so pretty. Okay. How would you characterize yourself as a high school student? I never learned anything. I never went to school. I never did anything. I just like went shopping and hung out. Mm -hmm. That I first know. answer does really not do Heidi well. Her continued effort to reinforce communal engagement over work is not what the elders had in mind. The elder is trained and tries to maintain a smile. You can, however, see the cracks ever so often. This is a sign of resentment. The elder doesn't like Heidi wants to party all the time. Watch how the elder responds. That it usually takes someone being in the industry for a very long time to land on the fun type of I want to organize a party. Really? Position. It's not like right away you don't get to do that. No. No. <laughs> no. I mean, would you be willing to work in retail sales? Here, Heidi shows Maybe her like evil collectivist roots, showing her incompetence and in presenting her threat to yeah, the SoCal girl survival. She displays her desire to party and ignore a socially productive world. However, students and nonverbals make a mockery like of Heidi and show the strength of no. the consumerist you you, individualist sure spirit. Yeah. It seems Lauren has been accepted by the elders, but she still faces the temptations of her collectivist party of friend Heidi. Only time will tell whether it is Lauren's part of the species or Heidi's who will win. And if it is Heidi's, we can only imagine the entire species will go extinct. Remember, if you are concerned about the extinction of the SCGs, you can contribute as an individualist by spurning your ties to the community, spending lots of money on things that don't matter, and, most of all, working hard so you can afford to do whatever you want and screw everyone else. For more information, visit ohno.gov. God bless the U.S.